Dorney Park hates spoilers. So instead of listing out every thrill you'll find at the park, we're gonna just list off your reactions in no particular order. Screaming, splashing, smiling, saying you're not nervous, being nervous, getting a second funnel cake, closing your eyes, opening them, closing them again, and having the best time ever. So sit back and enjoy the ride at Dorney Park and Wildwater Kingdom, including the brand new Kaleidoscope. Get the best deal on tickets at DorneyPark.com. He's going off on his whole, I don't get six, six days. I don't get to leave at two to go coach little league. I don't get six months maternity leave because you're, you don't What's have mad a. About maternity leave? <laughs> Imagine being mad about maternity yes! leave. How more clearly the villain of a movie would be in any other movie except the ones that we watch. And, and you know what rich men get when they're pregnant? literally anything they want. <laughs> That's how that would work. <laughs> Pretty sure. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we, my God, this movie was about how poor people deserved it. <laughs> Jeez. Movie we Christ. We, we sample another selection from Christian cinema because Eli was mean to a witch at some point. I'm your host, No <laughs> Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, we missed you last week, man. Welcome back. All right. Thanks, Noah. You know who's going to rise up and seize the means of production from those capitalist pigs? <laughs> the proletariat. <laughs> this movie made me a violent Marxist. I was already pretty close, but now I want to murder the next person I hear say job creator for sport. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, it was bad. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I don't understand your guys' notes at all. This is a, I, I didn't have any criticisms of this movie. It's about a hardworking man who tries to help the poor, but they're like, man, man, I want a union. I, I've got my notes somewhere here. Like this, this movie was written by Eli's in show snob persona. You know, I expected this guy to go off on Zales at any moment. <laughs> I was thinking of proposing. Get that shit in the garbage. Just runs it through <laughs> Smacks it out of his hand. All right. So before we get all the way into this week's movie, uh, how excited are you guys about Seattle? So pretty excited. excited. Me and Heath are going to start a poly relationship with a pansexual barista who doesn't believe in clouds. <laughs> And of course, if you want to see that for yourself, there are still tickets available. I'm sure that the barista is going to get a free ticket. Maybe we'll uh, we'll be treated a little something on stage. Part of the relationship Who knows? will be the platinum night. <laughs> Should have paid extra for the sex part of the show. <laughs> and of course, tickets are still available. You'll find uh, links on the show notes. So tell us, Heath, at long last, what will we be breaking down today? God damn it. We watched Believe... It's basically Atlas Shrugged, except yeah. <laughs> nobody invents something great for society like Cold Fusion or Adamantium or whatever the fuck Galton Ritter made. <laughs> oh, and plus Christianity somehow. So, it's yeah. Jesus Shrugged. <laughs> <laughs> and before anyone gets any ideas, preemptive veto on the Atlas Shrugged movies for bonus episodes. Not doing that. No, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> They're as long as the book, apparently. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If someone for whom economics, unions, and income inequality stole your penguin pants and you wanted to get the best revenge possible, <laughs> you will love this movie. Short of paying someone to tweet the word why at Heath for two straight hours, but somehow he's forced to answer in a 1984-esque situation, this is the best revenge I ever could have asked for. I hate you so much. I feel like he also stole a few words out of that first sentence of yours. I don't know, but, you know, he's he's like that. He's like yeah. that. They now, matter. Exactly. They matter to me. I, Those things he, that he, yeah, said that's, what he, that's me. what he meant. Yeah, exactly. Now, I have to say, in a, in, in a few ways, this movie is actually, statistically speaking, the worst film we've ever watched. All right, so I was, I was digging around on boxofficemojo.com before we recorded, and I found out that this movie actually makes the list of, like, the worst openings ever 
<laughs> so, statistically? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, <laughs> IMDb's number, or I mean, uh, Box Office Mojo's numbers only go back to 1982, so this is like since 1982. But this movie had the 50th worst per theater opening of all time in that in that period, <laughs> earning a whopping $748 per theater in its entire release. <laughs> but it it gets even worse than that because most of the uh, the the ones that are on that list are things that opened in like eight theaters and didn't make shit. This opened in quite a few. I don't know what their uh, where their cutoff is for wide release, but it had the twenty second worst release of any movie that passed that criterion. The twenty second uh, worst wide release ever, or since nineteen eighty two. So no, you're saying the movie that's all about capitalism and the free market. <laughs> Failed financially. <laughs> it lost something like me? two point six million dollars, <laughs> but only because of those goddamn unions that made them pay those actors all that money. <laughs> Fucking sag. Oh Jesus Christ! All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um, yeah, I'm going to say best worst. Really nice building that's supposed to be for poor people Who's in it? this one. It's, it's it's like a great place, but they put like newspapers on the windows and like a shopping cart in the hallway for mm. no reason. It's supposed to be the projects all of a sudden. It's beautiful. It's like a $3,000 apartment in Manhattan. It's yeah, no studio. shit. I'm going to go with best worst fire. Quick spoiler, this movie makes vultures of horror look like backdraft. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and keep in mind the standard here. <laughs> you can't make a movie as we've already hinted without unions. Now, I'm sure that you know, there were some camera guys and some actors who were just like, what are you going to do? But it's obvious someone in SFX was just like, yep, that's the fire we can do. And the guy was like, really? I feel like it looked better. Nope. nope. This is the best fire <laughs> technology can muster here in 2016. I watched your movie and this is what I put into it. Cool. All right. <laughs> What'd you think of the message? It was really great. Yeah. Here's oh seven hundred and forty eight dollars <laughs> to rent the theater and watch this fire by myself. <laughs> See, I was gonna go with it, 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 it sort of just like overall. I guess you could say best worst story arc, but I was gonna go with best worst character arc, right? Because like the main character of this movie would be well written if eventually he got his comeuppance, right? <laughs> But, yeah, but, would, but this is better. a movie about like if the rest of the town realized that Scrooge was right after all and Christmas did suck. We, <laughs> it kind of we, are, well, have, yeah. we are about to describe <laughs> a movie in which a character who inherited lots of money in a factory will avoid the question about whether or not he inherited lots of money in a factory at the finale. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, and who will also complain about how little maternity leave he gets. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> all right. Well, obviously, we're all dying to refute the fuck out of this film. So we'll keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the box office toxicity that is Believe. Hey, folks. As you know, our 100th episode is fast approaching. And as our longtime listeners know, we love to give to charity on this show. Last year, we raised more than $60,000 for modest needs during our Vulgarity for Charity Drive. And we're hoping to break that number this year, come October. But this year, for our 100th episode, we have a very important fundraiser that we'd like you to consider. Us. That's right, Eli. Us. To celebrate 100 episodes, we'd like to hit our goal of $740,000 per episode for us. To spend on things. I'd like to buy some magic shit. I'm going to see a doctor for the first time since penicillin was invented. Hmm. And I'm going to buy a hat, probably. So please, go to patreon.com slash godawful today to help us reach our goal of $740,000 an episode. We know we can do it. Because if we don't, we're going to quit the show. Yeah. Yeah. Give us money. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to Hey, Mr. Enright. Oh, hey, CJ. What's with all the empty machines? It's so cool in here. Oh, uh, my employees are on strike. Well, why would they do that? Don't they want to earn money? Yeah, CJ, but you see, when, when employees are 
underpaid. Um, Gosh, gee, uh, so many people out of work these days. I I can't imagine skipping out on work like a big old grump. Yeah, yeah, they aren't. Do, it's not, I bet there's some well, super awesome free market system that replaces big old lazy bones like them, huh? Uh, what? Sure wish I could work. You are, are a child. So? I'd love to work like a real American. You are an abhorrent little piece of propaganda. I don't need all my fingers, I swear. <laughs> Accidents happen. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that the fault of a company owner? <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with the logos from four production companies that probably didn't quite make back their logo money from this thing. <laughs> Always a good sign when I don't recognize any of the logos. What's depressing is that I recognized at least one of them, you know, just from doing Power this. Power three, yeah. Jo- oh, actually, no, it was the Freestyle Media one that I recognized. So, t- oh. yeah, no, we've seen at least two of these. Wow. Well, hopefully this movie was enough to tank them all and we'll never have to see them again. So uh, <laughs> now it's time to meet our hero. He's in a truck listening to Christmas music, kind of bah humbug in it. Yep. Okay. This beginning is so confusing to it me. It is. This, at the beginning of this movie, he does classic villain behavior. Oh, look, I have cupcakes that are for someone else, but I eat them for myself. Mm-hmm. Right? Classic villain slash co-host on my um, podcast. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah, I mean, whatever. Who doesn't eat the cupcakes out of the package on the way? That's like pretty... Normal for that's the opening line of my autobiography. <laughs> Eating all the cupcakes in package while you're still in the car on the way home. <laughs> the Heath and Wright story Sometimes begins. Sometimes you need a car cupcake. Yeah. You don't what know. What am I? I was supposed to not get dessert at the end of my drive? Yeah, no, I get it. And beginning and throughout. <laughs> what, am I, what am I fucking doing? He saved one for her. Yeah, he Bullshit. did. He did. He only ate five of the six. Yeah. But as he's driving, also. Is it just me or does he drive by a four alarm fire for no goddamn it's, reason? It's crazy. He just drove past like the post apocalypse part of town for a second right. there. It's just like one strip mall. There's like just garbage fires and smudgy orphans and nothing else <laughs> for like one block. It's really weird. So, okay. So he gets to this big Christmas shindig. This is where we're going to meet Nancy, his confusing platonic girlfriend. His friend. His friend, Nancy. (laughs) This is the stupidest goddamn love triangle in the history of film. I'm just going to throw that. We'll explain it as it goes, but this is the dumbest. Okay, so yeah. So we meet her. We have no reason not to think she's not his girlfriend or his wife or anything for nine-tenths of this movie. Yeah, he brought her a cupcake, like you said. I don't (laughs) think... I don't think I thought he ate all six and had to stop at a second store to get the, <laughs> the other cupcake. I've had to do that. That's it. Yeah. In your experience. Yeah. You, you stop again yeah, and you get happens. one more from somewhere somewhere else. It's now, fine. I want to point out, OK, so we're at this Christmas pageant. Now, the whole movie is going to be about a Christmas pageant, but this scene will never be relevant to any of it. Nope. This, it's, it's important that you know that there's no goddamn reason for this scene. This two hour movie could have been trimmed down about 18 minutes and got all the relevant plot points in. They wouldn't have been able to wrap in Elvis guy, though. It's That's pretty cool. True. At the yeah. end, we'll get there. There's going to be an Elvis we'll guy there. at the beginning and the end. Don't. <laughs> there's an Elvis impersonator at a Christmas pageant. Two <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. A big fat guy. Who's jolly and unrelated to the birth of Christ? Come on! (laughs) And also, just to confuse you of the, is this a good guy? Is this a bad guy? Is he Scrooge? Is he fucking Gandhi or whatever? They have this scene where there's this kid crying, but the hero like bends down and gives him a candy cane and helps him find his dad. And I wrote in my notes, I bet he's diabetic and he dies now. Never give other people's kid candy, please. That's dangerous as fuck. You don't know. You just don't know. Rude, anyway, weird way to criticize me on the show. I don't take shots at you, but that's fine. I feel like you can wave it around my... and not give it to them and still accomplish the same thing. Don't be an asshole about the diabetes, <laughs> what we're saying. I oh, I ask their medical history first because I don't want to fuck a diabetic kid because I don't want to get diabetes. So it's not a problem. Here's a fun game. If you know someone who has type 1 diabetes... Ask them how they got it, like when they <laughs> ate too much candy. They all lose their minds. It's phenomenal. I have a friend I've been friends with for 10 years, and he still hates the joke. It's been a decade. It's amazing. You got to do it to people you know. I'm just saying. 
If you want to fuck with it's a like, diabetic, wow, this it like a show is Halloween? the place to go for your advice, people. <laughs> Nobody fucks with the diabetics like this show. Got to touch their insulin thing, too. Their little <laughs> thing. Just, boop, boop. just push the numbers when they're not paying oh, attention. Jesus. They get sleepy. <laughs> fuck. All right, so now we cut to the present day, which brings up the when were we question that will never be. <laughs> Weird thing to put on the screen of a movie. Like, and now the movie's about now. <laughs> so like, now, go. go movie. What? Now. So we see this character once more, but now he's driving around in a car that has been very recently egged. And to be fair, Heath has been there as well that time he tried to cook eggs on his car. I think we all agree <laughs> it was a good experiment and it didn't didn't quite work out. But I mean, I get it. You, you finish driving and then you got breakfast. You just scrape it off and put it into a bucket. No, no one's here to judge you. I just I feel like Heath and this character have a lot. Worked out for me. You didn't have any, so, so it didn't work out for you. <laughs> Car breakfast. You complained about it. I eat, I eat your eggs now. So, so just so that you okay. And by the way, we've also got he's he's driving around in his egged car with a flat tire, and a truck is following behind him ominously. And and then he has to stop for a, a train, but not frontwards. <laughs> so stupid. I, what is going on the car here? Is facing every possible wrong direction to make sense <laughs> for stopping at a train. They do multiple shots. They fucked up the shot so badly. It's just like. Like they had a huge scramble to to like catch the train to it do must the have shot. Been. Yeah, they ended up facing backwards. They got like five <laughs> usable seconds, but not really because the angles are all stupid. Yeah, <laughs> look, Osh, we can wait around for another three hours for a train, or we can just assume he backed up towards it. <laughs> we just splice in stock footage from like the first steam engine splicing <laughs> this guy. <laughs> we'll do that. Just Noah and his siblings running out of the way because they think a train's headed <laughs> towards them. So also we get right here, we open up for another uh, awesome we can't afford to bump these cars wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the truck with the truck that was falling behind him rams into the back of him, which means stops four feet from behind him and then he like moves forward and oh my neck. I this is like <laughs> this is like a car accident, huh? <laughs> And then everybody pulls him out of his car uh, and beats the ever-loving fuck out of him. Yeah. Right. And spoiler alert, because this movie's timeline is going to be slightly less confusing than Mementos. This <laughs> is because he's not giving away a free Christmas I, pageant yeah, this year. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's why the eggs and the flat tire, too. And the beating the shit out yeah. of him. Mm -hmm. The attempted murder. And they also they set fire to his car. Because yep. like, people get pissed about their Christmas pageants, god damn it. And they take him out and they push his face into the pavement for a second and they're like, how does it taste? Taste the poverty. That's the, that's the line we get. Yeah, so it's like, like, I'm not <laughs> tasting but it. They're going to make him like go buy food with food stamps in a store. Taste this. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that's the catchphrase of Cup of Noodle. I don't know if they were sponsored by <laughs> Cup of Noodle or it's doing this, but... I remember those. <laughs> Taste the poverty. So, yeah, so they beat the fuck out of him for them being poor, as far as we know at the moment. They set fire to his car. They all run off. Um, and then along comes a black kid just a skipping through this alleyway. Yeah. Like, and he doesn't notice the burning car for a minute. He's like, la, 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 la. Oh, what's that smell slash noise? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's just got like two baguettes sticking out of his bag going by <laughs> in his abandoned area for no reason. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the, uh, the kid yells out, you know, does anybody need any help? And then the guy goes, yeah, you know, if you don't mind, that'd be great. And then we get the first of a number of explosions because a car's on fire. Why? Okay. Why are there little mini explosions every <laughs> so often? Like, was the car full of like fireworks in different amounts of ice like what how, how what the fuck was happening Obviously. that would make perfect sense uh, there's also this moment where the kid's like help me help me and and nobody comes like we see all the empty windows and i was like are they not helping because this is a because this is a black neighborhood is that oh. i learned that a couple weeks ago is that what it are we supposed to know that Annette, why is he helping is he i don't he just didn't pass his blackness test apparently <laughs> oh, God, I hope everyone listening to this heard that episode a couple weeks back. By the way, guys, that's a reference <laughs> to another movie. That's not just Eli. Just Well, no, it is just Eli going off the cuff. But I, but there's a reason <laughs> for it. I don't think it was a reference. I think so. <laughs> giving a lot of credit. So now it's time uh, to move to 36 hours earlier than now. 
So we cut to him in his office uh, with a union rep and his accountant. As they're learning that, you know, the finances have gone to shit. So get your Christian movie bingo cards out now. The finances have gone to shit for the company. And now he's facing a choice between laying off 50 workers right before Christmas, asking them to take a pay cut or canceling the Christmas pageant. <laughs> or selling to the Japanese. Well, there's also- yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> yes, and that's- okay, so there's the ever. <laughs> to be clear, that's the conflict now. It's Christmas pageant. Or TPP, you decide. <laughs> That's the fucking conflict of this movie they're setting up. <laughs> and I have to say, this is where I realized, like, oh, this is what this movie is going to be about. Because the whole scene is actually, why won't the damn dirty union be reasonable yeah. and just take an itty bitty pay cut? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so and, and like, again, I thought we were setting this guy up as Scrooge and that he was eventually going to get his comeuppance and that he was going to turn his turn around and become a good person. But no, it's this movie is going to like he's going to be right the whole time. Oh, no, he's useless. John Galt, who inherited his money. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's so funny because like the whole time I'm writing right away. I'm like, boy, these workers sure could benefit from a strong social safety net. Is that what we're trying to? say in this movie <laughs> like i mean think about how much of this nope. movie's problems are solved by medicaid expansion most, virtually all most of them right yeah all. okay yeah that's what i thought um yeah but the union rep is pissed because hey because you know he's going like it's not my fault the economy is terrible and the mine shut down like you own the mine right because shut up shut up um but yeah the, the union rep is pissed and 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 uh he's not taking no goddamn pay cut and again i can't emphasize enough that it is not a like I understand you got to do what you got to do, but I'm the union rep. The union rep is like, uh-uh, my fellers want 85-minute lunch yeah. breaks and 90-minute <laughs> shit breaks. And for, it will get more explicit in this movie that the unions are the bad guy, but that is the message. The message is the unions won't budge because we're like bad guys with selfish workers who want more money than they deserve. Yep. And if you don't put on the Christmas pageant this year, they will kill you. They will... They, they will, will murder you. you. They will, yeah, crucify you. A lot of different terms for what they're going to do if you cancel the Christmas pageant. So, yeah, so the, the union rep walks outside and you can hear him in the background of the rest of this scene going like, we're not going to work without extra benefits in a poodle grooming room anymore. Who's with me? Rabble, 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 rabble. So all the workers walk out on him. Also, he, this is where he has to kind of talk to the accountant about, man, I just don't know how we're going to put that Christmas pageant on. And of course, the accountant should be saying, how the fuck does that matter now? Your entire <laughs> workforce just walked off the fucking job and you're worried about the Christmas pageant? Jesus, man. But no, instead, he's like, oh, wow, that Christmas pageant is way more important than the livelihood of those 90 people that just walked out. We're going to find out that it actually is. Yes. Economically, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to claim that the Christmas pageant is extraordinarily important. You'll find out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So he leaves the factory that day. And wouldn't you know it? There's a two. There's a couple of heavies hanging around his car. A couple of factory workers being <laughs> menacing. But he's got a security guard who's loyal. Who's going to like walk him out to his car. Mm -hmm. And uh, but by the way, yeah, there's the, the, the menacing guys. We know they're uh, they're they're union workers because they're wearing hard hats during not work outside for no reason yes outside standing by <laughs> his car it's like a union regulation you have to literally wear a hard hat in the shower while you're fucking your wife it doesn't matter you have to have a hard hat that's right <laughs> and, and as though this movie were now too subtle he's like oh no thanks loyal guy who's the only loyal worker at my wonderful factory <laughs> i'll walk home the song comes on yes. and these are the opening lyrics <laughs> they took it all but they want more literally <laughs> those are literally the words and that are it, being <laughs> sung to us amazing and then it it fades yes. down it fades yes. down because the, what they because the i assume the next lyrics were dirty you faces <laughs> dark the bolshevik <laughs> unions well, and also they, they undercut the <laughs> fuck out of their own scene, right? Because so he walks home, he's walking down the tracks and he's all depressed and everything. And it starts raining on him. But then he runs into this <laughs> giant mansion and I'm like, gee, I hope there's some dry clothes here, you poor fella. Literally, it, this is a poor, sad millionaire just, factory <laughs> owner ducks into his mansion out of the rain. Scene. It is. <laughs> 
Um, also, okay, so, and then the mayor calls him, right? Calls him at home to tell him that he will personally murder him to death if there's no Christmas pageant. This town really likes its fucking Christmas pageant. All right. <laughs> it really does. So now we cut to a bar where a guy gets a message or something, and that's that scene. We pan across some Lefroy for a second. I thought that was nice. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that scene well, for? They, yeah, somebody calls the the bar. Is this landline? Who the fuck calls the landline at a bar? Is right? it like Vera looking for Norm? Who's doing that? <laughs> Stupid. This is fucking 2016 when they made this movie. Bart Simpson. But the bartender takes a paper message for him and hands it to him. It's something about the fucking plan that's, I don't know, it's going to happen later. Yeah, I'd love it if the message just says, buy a goddamn cell phone, asshole. Write a better plot, asshole. <laughs> right, this is a bad too. movie you're in. <laughs> So he go. He shows back up for work. Um, the uh, the Matthew, the main character, does, and Charlie, the security guard, has to have a quick moment with them. Ch Charlie, the I'm on your side because I believe in you. Because <laughs> he's like, you believe in me? The That's scam. Yeah, the scam. <laughs> yeah. The good guys in this movie are union scams. <laughs> And with their literally taking bribes from a factory owner. The positive scene is where he's like, don't worry. <laughs> I stayed here by your car all night so that nobody messed up your beautiful car while you went home to your mansion. I and my brother slept in yes. your car to make sure no one in their anger messed it up. And he's like, oh, here you go. Here's a little tip for you. Good guy in the movie. Oh <laughs> Fat guy from ice hockey that you look like. Yeah. <laughs> And he looks like the skinny guy. They're like when they stand next yes, to each other, it's yes. the fat and the skinny from Ice Hockey. There's no other way to old, interpret their Old people love appearance. that joke. It's an 8 bit so, Nintendo game, everybody. <laughs> you had to blow on the cartridge. He did. Anyway, this is also where we get the weird, ominous walking to the Christmas warehouse scene. What the fuck is that place? <laughs> I don't. Are you kidding me? He walks through his like regular size factory and then he opens a giant door and there's like. An enormous warehouse of literally sparkling Christmas crap. Yes. It's literally like ding. And there's like, it's like, it's like warehouse 13 of Hobby Lobby full of weird it's, Christmas it's crap. The, it's the closing scene on fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark, except with reindeer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's so good. It's also incredibly obviously green screen. Yes. Like you can see red, blurry lines around his face in comparison <laughs> yes. to just like, it's amazing. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, what a sloppy way for them to set up the giant warehouse full of Christmas shit that they're going to need later in the movie. I want to point out, we will never see this room or any of this Christmas stuff ever again. Literally not. Nope. Um, also, for some reason, it was shot as though if he was going into his armory to gear up for the third act. I don't get... <laughs> what they were going for. Oh, how amazing would that have been if there was a final showdown where he uses Christmas decorations to fight off the <laughs> unionist mob? <laughs> and a happy new year. <laughs> Shoots him with a candy cane. Oh, I love it. <laughs> also, also with this scene, they really quick set up the fact that he uses physical paper notebooks for keeping track of his entire factory operation. <laughs> We're like, it, this will actually matter later. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. I, like, is he Amish? Like, he, <laughs> he owns a modern car factory and is also Amish and has paper notebooks for it. Yeah. This, this movie is crippled by the lack of technology because it's constantly like, why wouldn't that person have a cell phone? Why wouldn't you have a computer? Why wouldn't you just Google that? Yeah, that kind of shit. So, okay. So, speaking of Characters that will meet places that we'll never see again. Things that get shoehorned into the movie for no goddamn reason. It's time to meet wacky foreign restaurant owner guy. <laughs> Nick's restaurant. Oh, God. This character begins all of his lines and ends all of his lines with, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> what fucking accent was this supposed to be? Um, He cycles through five or six accents in his like three sentences of of talk in this entire like it's, it goes greek to middle eastern to british to the brooklyn back to greek at some point yeah it's crazy i feel like greek was the underlying at least attempt he here. looks a little bit middle east he looks like aladdin's about to jump on him and then like <laughs> bounce up to like a stick and spin around it again and then jump on somebody else <laughs> boy the old folks are loving these jokes man i gotta Prince say persia aladdin and, <laughs> and by the way his whole like um his whole part in this movie is to just 
dote all over this rich guy at the restaurant saying pageant, 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 pageant. And and of course, folksy well, humor. Yeah, well, obviously. You know, my wife, she does not like m- me. <laughs> <laughs> Take her, please. I, I go get you some food. <laughs> <laughs> and now the weird platonic girlfriend character shows up so they can have the first of many John Galt conversations. Yeah, she, she's like, yeah, you know, it's hard times now with the debt and the layoffs and the greed. To which he replies, isn't it the government's job to feed the poor? And like, it's a light conversation. She instantly shifts to no. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, bad you. will do it's, it. It's your job. The, the people you employ have to pay for stuff using the money you pay them. <laughs> this is, I mean, in like very simple terms for those people, it's your job. Well, but. You know all the times in history when the rich have taken care of the poor. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. No, and that and that is the argument that, that, that this movie will just assume, right? Is that no? It's far better to have a system that is decentralized and inefficient and has no oversight. Duh. <laughs> she she has to like backtrack for a second. She's like, oh, that was that was pretty kind of like liberalish. What I said. The Bible says <laughs> it's the private sector's job. God. Yeah, what? God borrowed a lot from Milton Friedman, apparently, in the Bible. I don't remember the part about supply-side economics in the Bible. I think it's the opposite. And if you're wondering how they work their way into this conversation, they don't. This just suddenly happens in the middle of talking about something else, like every other fucking thing in this movie. Um, This is also the first time, and this is going to be a confusing goddamn reveal that we get, get piecemeal through the movie, that when he inherited this company from his grandfather, his grandfather made a stipulation that he had to do an annual Christmas pageant forever in order to own the company. <laughs> his grandfather's a contract in death for yes. this, this, this requirement. Like, is that a real thing you can no, do? There's no fucking way. I hope so. Cause otherwise I am fucking with my life. <laughs> yeah, like how ridiculous would you be allowed to get with those rules? I wonder you could get crazy with it. Just June 4th. She's throwing water balloons full of pee at everyone wearing a hat. I'm so sorry. But my husband, this is a condition. That is, I don't even know. He thought it would be funny. I'm so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have two more balloons. I'm allowed to hit the same person twice. Would you let me just get you with another one and then... Why is it pee? Not ruin It's some? actually... It wasn't originally pee. It was arbitration. We got it down to pee. <laughs> <laughs> so be happy. Eli, it's weird dude. First year, we just had to have Andrew walk back and forth wearing different hats. It was a whole <laughs> thing. I don't want to get into it. Seriously, I'm going to find out if this is real and put some crazy <laughs> shit in my will. I would much rather just spend the rest of the the episode just brainstorming with you than do this fucking movie. But unfortunately, <laughs> we got to jump back into this. Okay, so now we cut to the, the city council meeting where we can really dive into that post mortem contract of his grandfather's. <laughs> it's a town meeting just about this. Yes. That's what's about to happen. Yes, that's the only business. Yeah, and spoiler alert: this movie is about the head of town. Hall, town, one of the members of the board <laughs> mm-hmm. of town hall being like a villain. Yeah. So you, you're, you're talking about the aggressive baseball dad who clearly just beat up another <laughs> dad earlier that day. Who's the secular like <laughs> bad guy who is in government yeah. somehow ish. And, and how do we know he's the bad guy, Eli? Because <laughs> um, he's got a goatee. Well, there's that. Yeah. He's got a very nice, lovely beard, actually. <laughs> But also, this is so amazing. The mayor says, this is how the scene opens. He's Matthew is standing there before him like an inquest or whatever. And the mayor says, are you telling me your company can't put on the Christmas and then <laughs> holiday. holiday pageant? That's how we know, because he's the guy who goes, <laughs> holiday, holiday, holiday. <laughs> to which the poor factory owner goes, now, now, my grandfather started this pageant to celebrate Jesus. Mm-hmm. Fucking Jesus <laughs> just turns around, gives a rabbi in the pew behind him a finger. Just <laughs> well, well, this whole movie happened. Jesus. This whole movie happened before the Trinity ruling when Christmas was an illegal word. So now they're fine. Like, oh they would, yeah, they no. would have relaxed about oh, this. Yeah, exactly. If they made right. this now, right? And this is where they pull out their their contract. Now, I guess there could be like a stipulation in a company's contract that, like, we give you this 
um, in exchange for like for the next 30 years, your company's going to put on a whatever. You know, I can't I don't think you can do it in perpetuity till the end of the universe or whatever. But they have their goddamn contract and they'll be damned if he's going to not do the Christmas pageant. As a matter of fact, they go so far as accusing him of stealing the pageant money for his rich house and his rich clothes and shit. And again, this is where the main character is like, look, I know you look at me and you think, oh, that guy's got a mansion and a couple of million dollar cars and a helicopter pad and think that it's all going swell for him. But you know what? I don't care for your tone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yes. It really is just like, yeah, no, I just don't like it when you talk to me like that. <laughs> Also, we get this. Okay, so the city council guy's saying, well, of course, if you sell your company, then we can have our Christmas pageant for some reason that never actually makes any fucking sense. Yeah, what are they? I, I honestly don't understand what they're saying. It sounds like they're saying it, like he can he can sell the pageant part of his business, but then he loses his inheritance. They, that's what they accuse him. I, what the fuck does that mean? Sell the pageant. They refer to this several times in the movie. <laughs> I, the, the sell all the shit in that warehouse to him. I have no fucking idea. And, and, and like he starts going off on this whole, like, you know, I, I, it, again, weird choice in the movie. Cause they could have made him a self-made man, right? They didn't have to have him inherit all his money or whatever. Um, but he's trying to explain how it's it, not just that he inherited that money. He earned that inheritance somehow. He goes like, damn it, I <laughs> yeah. swept that factory with my bare hands and I worked there seven days a week. So we have a long history of labor violations, but that's not the point. The point is that of all the grandchildren that he had, I was the best one, which is why I am a <laughs> self-made inheritor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, look, I, uh, it's been a while, so I feel like I can talk about it now. My cousin married a piece of shit who is a Republican, and at Thanksgiving, he was trying to explain to me why Donald Trump inheriting all of his money didn't mean that he wasn't a self-made billionaire or whatever um, he was. No, and after wait. he lost that conversation <laughs> to me, I feel like he made this scene in the movie. <laughs> it's like, I'll work my fingers to the bone. And it's like, well, no, you had... Ten million dollars well, under your fingers is a nice. Question. I had to occasionally sell off stock. It's <laughs> tough. Did any of the other people who swept the factory end up with millions of dollars? No, or was no, that, it was just 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 just, just you. Yeah. Just oh the, well, you did seven days. Well, what, were they doing five? <laughs> <laughs> were they making five sevenths of millions of dollars? No, no. Okay. It was, as it turns out, not so much. Yeah, and so and also, you know, he's basically saying like, hey, if this community wants a Christmas pageant, everyone's going to have to chip in, damn it. And they're all like, fuck you, we don't like chipping in. I, I honestly wonder how many times the word rabble rabble appeared in the script for this movie. <laughs> oh, I wish I was an extra in this movie so that I could just overdo it in the background just for the people watching. Just like, have a tiny bag of gold that I keep pulling out. <laughs> Wagging at another Jewish person across the aisle. I don't think. I mean, I feel like if we watched and looked for it, we would see that. I think that might have been written in as well. Um, so now, of course, it's time for him to do the slow mo walk of shame out of the city council meeting because, again, that was the only business in this entire meeting. Great moment. <laughs> He's walking slow mo and like they're all staring at him evil. And this one guy, the least intimidating guy ever, goes for the like shoulder bump block yes. thingy it's so he like and the guy like slowly turns the camera it's like white dinesh d'souza like could not be less <laughs> intimidating of a human being also <laughs> this is where his car gets egged the logistics of this are puzzling to me i wanted to look back and some guys just rushing out of the meeting <laughs> what are they going yeah, well? right <laughs> the guy gets out there yeah he said he was gonna throw the christmas pageant oh fuck Oh, Fuck, I feel can I pitch you on car breakfast? <laughs> I know a podcaster and it, you ride around and the sun does it for I'm, you. It's like a big scramble. I'm feeling, I see. I was thinking that there was just that one guy who's just been bringing eggs to the city council meeting every week, just going, you know, one of these days, somebody's going to piss me off. I'm going to be ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he goes out to his, his egged car. He calls his lady friend. She gives him some great wisdom here. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is mm -hmm. the first of 11 times someone will tell him not to worry because things happen for a reason. Uh, hey, guys, things do happen for a reason. 
Well, they do. I mean, you know, cause, <laughs> effect, that kind of shit. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so things do happen for a reason. That is correct. Yeah. Again, to some Hume philosophy. Yeah. It's, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. So, we, mean, we mean the same thing. I'm saying things happen for a reason. You're agreeing that things happen for a reason. <laughs> We're all on the same page. This is not a verbal trick. Obviously, the secret is correct. That entire book is legit and we endorse it. So... All right, now we're all caught back up with the beginning of the movie. We're 25 minutes in, just to give you an idea how unnecessary that little flash forward was. So, it, we, you know, he gets beat up or whatever. Yeah, the kid finds him and everything. And now he wakes up all beat up. And apparently some very lovely black woman has taken him in. Uh, why? Because, Did- she, because he followed her kid home. And if he falls you home, you get to keep him. If nobody, you you have to put up posters that you found him in case he belongs we to will, someone else. We will never ever get an answer why this woman doesn't take him to the I hospital. Don't. Why she takes him to her home <laughs> and like heals him there. I, mean, I would be mad at someone if I woke up and they were like, "Hey, I took you here and I cared for you." I'd be like. But what if something terrible has happened <laughs> and you don't have the ability to fucking drain fluid from my book? You're going to make like, me what? burn my book, aren't you, lady? She's like, no, sorry. <laughs> my son found you on the street and asked, can we keep him? I said, yes, so, so we can keep you. I asked. There was sorry. no other kids there to call dibs. So, yeah. I'm trying to find a shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't poke holes in the last millionaire's box. He learned his lesson, though. He learned his lesson. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so now, okay, just as he's trying to wrap his head around that, this kid comes up, obviously hopped up on cocaine or fucking just shot out of a cannon. <laughs> High on life. It's, is that it? Yeah. So unlikable. This is so <laughs> obviously one of those terribly behaved children that like needs medication and discipline and just like shits in the fondue at a dinner party and the parents are just like so energetic and you're like get your kid on some fucking pills yep he's one of I literally don't care what pills you put him on put him on pills until he falls asleep and figure out the right ones before he wakes up I don't fucking care cause he gets right up in this guy's face he's been in a goddamn coma and he's like they beat the crap out of you and it's like wow also mom's a nursing school dropout so yeah mom, like, right. so right. she knows what she's doing yeah. yeah she can do surgery like those nurses can. Yeah, she's like, mom's like, yeah, no, that's great. But I think it's time we get him some real help. And I'm like, now it's time? Now. 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 Because you, 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 you know what they say, the first 24 hours don't much fucking matter. That's the old saying. <laughs> Jesus. Now that we've covered him with enough blankets, he'll, he'll be okay for the quote unquote Western medicine to take over. Am I right? Huh? Also, by the way, this is supposed to be a poor mom and, and child, right? They're like, yeah, you can, and you can destitute. tell they're, they're you can tell they're poor because they're wearing the fingerless poverty gloves that all the poor people <laughs> wear. They're all sail, sailors plus poor people, and uh, also they live in a giant crate and barrel sales Apparently, floor yes. store <laughs> retail apartment. They went so out of their way to make this otherwise quite lovely home look like it. You know, they're, they're like, let's put. You know what? Poor people have is pallets and a pirate's chest of Blankets. gold doubloons next to the table. <laughs> what the fuck? There's literally it's, it's so stupid. It's it's so obviously a huge, spacious, beautiful apartment with hardwood floors, and they were like wood. Poor people, poor people, wood. It's <laughs> Shipping crates, pallets everywhere, just- like to hold all the oversized. Poor people shit they had sent from overseas, <laughs> from antique to their house. Ha- what the fuck? So, of course, the only thing the kid can talk about is the upcoming Christmas pageant that he's so excited about because he wants to be the angel Gabriel in it. In fact, that's what he dreams of as he falls asleep at night, being the angel Gabriel in the Christmas pageant. But again, this child is so badly behaved for what is supposed to be comic effect. Like, he pulls a cantaloupe that he's drawn Avril Lavigne's face on. He starts fucking it and describing (laughs) how much he's excited. And the mom's just like, oh, CJ, don't get all worked up again. And it's like, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) Call the goddamn hospital and get your animal slash child off my chest. (laughs) 
He's like, I love wrestling. Look, I jump off the loft onto your chest. ka I'm the underdog <laughs> rock. I'm the rock. We should also point out You're here, bleeding. by the way, that um, that mom is coughing the cough of poverty as well. <laughs> oh, my but God. Again, she has the coughs like, like the ones that you would nest the word bullshit between. <laughs> but what's amazing is she's. This movie's so badly written that her cough will never matter. <laughs> so later in the movie, she will get a night's sleep and never cough Yeah, well, again. with a blanket, though, and a wet rag. Yeah. And meanwhile, his accountant is rooting through the shit in his office. Trying to break into the safe, and and Dr. Lady comes in, and she's like, hey, what are you doing here? And he's like, nothing. Not I'm the good guy, not the bad <laughs> guy. Should I tell him anything <laughs> if I see him? Like the safe combination? Do you know that? <laughs> I'll tell him that, that in case he for, forgot odd it. He might as well have his dick out just fucking a bag of money with dollar signs on it when she walks in. <laughs> so, I brought this yeah. with me. Yeah, allow me to leave as suspiciously as as is possible. So yeah, so we, we cut back to CG. He, he's, 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 you know, passed back out, you know, since they're not going to get him any medical help. I guess he just wants to, like, sleep well until he dies. But this is where CJ wakes him up now dressed like an angel to reinforce how badly he wants to be Gabriel in this Christmas pageant. Yep. By prying open the unconscious uh, assault victim's yeah. eye. Mm -hmm. That's how he <laughs> manages that. And like, I, like I, I wanted him to just smack the kid, you know, just like, and oh, I'm so sorry. But, you know, I, I just, that's in my instinct when someone peels my eyes open as I sleep. <laughs> you know, I'm really badly hurt, right? <laughs> Yeah, right. Especially around the eyes here, uh, according to the makeup. So now uh, uh, Matthew, the main character, has to go to the bathroom, but it's a poor people bathroom. Uh oh, comedy. Yeah, right. And there's this weird comedy moment where they're like, "Here, here's a magazine." He's like, "Oh no, I don't need that." And they're like, "No, you have to wipe with a magazine." <laughs> That's how poor we are. We wipe with magazine. And he's like, "Oh, wow." Ah! Like, ah! Because magazines Come are on. more expensive than toilet paper, dumbass. Come on, man. Yeah. Was, I thought that was pretty funny. Oh. That was pretty, like if I was black, I'd be trying to like trick white people all the time into like <laughs> weird, guilty, racist moments. <laughs> that would be fun. Black people are so lucky they get to do that. <laughs> That's what I always say. So now, so CJ takes him down because apparently they have a communal bathroom in this apartment building with these gigantic apartments. And also, there's this weird moment where this woman, like this old lady who is not part of the movie, just peeks out. Like, <laughs> I don't know why this is in the movie. <laughs> like, she was about to check that he's like, not going to go fuck the kid in the bathroom. That's I, definitely what it seemed like was right, happening. Yeah, no, she's like, you're going to fuck that little boy? He's like, well, not now. You've seen me. Like, hold on. Are you both no. cisgender males? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, you can rape the kid then. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. That's just an inevitable thing that happens. That's, I don't know. They have no way around that one. No way to prevent that. So they return to the apartment because holy fuck is this movie slow. Oh boy, is it. <laughs> and apparently he sent CJ off to, in search for a phone. She's like, oh, so you just send my kids on errands? And he's like, yeah. She's like, oh, no, that's okay. Because Earth works like that in this movie, I guess. Yeah. And now, now he hurts her feeling by being like so... Why are you such a bad mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, don't you want something better for your, for your kid? Because you're poor. And she's like, well, better than love, strength, courage. These are the most. And he's like, well, yeah, that plus like also not being poor, like, like a Nintendo, I meant, like I meant a like switch. Money. That'd be pretty cool. He'd probably mm -hmm. also like love, courage, strength, and a switch. Right, and then she's like, "I do what I can to help these people. Who are these I, uh, yeah, people?" Yeah, right. Now uh, we will <laughs> we will later learn that this giant seven bedroom condo is apparently a homeless shelter that she runs because I, later no. everyone will be in her apartment. So apparently, she invented this apartment. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> But she gets real defensive. Yeah. She's very like, oh, my son has love and love is all that matters. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, money is really great. Have you had money? It's I'm just saying. Yeah, she's like, all the real blessings are free. I'm like, oh, there's somebody with no blessings. That's what you say when you don't have any blessings. <laughs> That's someone who has not traveled on a plane to Europe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just flash cut to her in first class. Oh, I get it. I get it. Sorry. 
right now. <laughs> no, this is actually way better than Fuck love courage. and courage. Do you guys want my I, love and strength and courage? This is, I don't. <laughs> not using it anymore. <laughs> so, so I guess eventually he gets a phone. He calls that security guard scab guy to take him home. Yeah. And he's like, all right, got to go. And she, I really wanted her to just like come up behind him with a sledgehammer and smash his knees like Kathy <laughs> Bates. <laughs> Misery so for the fast. rest of the movie. Oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> So, yeah, so he gets home, and uh, the platonic weird girlfriend character is there. Um, she's like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, he's limping and bruised, and he, but he's fine. He's fine, you know. Why would you? Right. And and she's like, we should call the police. And he's like, no, no, I don't want to make trouble. Yeah, I was just beaten almost to death, and my car was set on fire. Like, you kind of need a police report when that happens, right? You know, they, they, for insurance purpose? No, you're just going to, must be really fucking rich. I just want him to. Him to be talking to his Allstate agent. Yeah, my car caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do need to from file the outside. That. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> because there was gasoline poured on it. Duh. I put the pictures in the app. It said that I could just do it on the app. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean it's more serious? <laughs> well, that's not what it said on the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what Aaron Insurance told me at all. Now, <laughs> and, he, and he says to her, she's like, he's like, where have you been? Why haven't you called? And he's like, well, a little boy found me and took me in. She says, why were you in a Dickens novel then? That also needs explanation. Oh, and she's like, why is everybody so mad? He's like, must be the pageant. I'm like, really? You think it's the pageant? The pa <laughs> It's not the fact that all of these people are out of work and you're the only person in town with gasoline in your car and you have a fucking man. You don't think that that it might be. Yeah, no, but it's the pageant. It is the, pa again, every time we write, why would it be the pageant? We are wrong. This movie is right. They are, in <laughs> fact, just mad about the pageant. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I love to, as, as he's leaving, she yells, he yells it back to her. He's like, I'm not Scrooge. He was way better written, for the record. So much better. <laughs> and now it's time for the greatest scene in this or any movie, <laughs> perhaps, the closest a film has ever come to killing Heath Henry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy shit. Talk about missing the fucking point. I ruined a monitor. That happened. <laughs> <laughs> ruined a monitor. So, all right. So he goes back to the factory to his office, trying to figure out how to get everybody back to work. And the accountant and union rep show up all cat that ate the canary style. Like, like they didn't expect to see him at all. And the boss guy, what's his name? Matthew. Matt Payton. Matt Payton. Yeah. He thinks, his theory is that the union guy tried to murder him in order to get a pay raise. And the union guy's like, you know, it's like stupid, right? <laughs> like, I wouldn't be able to, how you would that help us if, get? If you're murdered, I don't, you can't. <laughs> But this is where he lays into his like laundry list of what, how bad it is for him, the millionaire. He's like, it's not my fault this company's failing. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was the whole exactly basis of your entire concept. But he's like, it's not my fault the economy's terrible and workman's comp is at an all-time high and these lazy bastards get six sick days a year. Six, <laughs> six days. That, that is his like big moment. Yeah. These six Sick days a year. He even says, I can't go to the bathroom with a magazine for 20 minutes. As though going to the bathroom for 20 minutes is something you should not be allowed to do. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, the, the, his message here is poor people are lazy magazine reading little league coaches that want to leave at 2 p.m. <laughs> The government would just make regulations against unions. I'd finally be able to compete in a free, unregulated market. Right, yeah. Like exactly. God intended, like in Vietnam with slave factories. So Yeah. Yeah, boy, it's amazing how how quickly that free market argument falls apart when you point out that unions are a free market. Oh, are they part of competing? Is that they are using the market? Oh, it's the, the same to thing. Their advantage yeah, to make labor more money is also within capitalism. Go fuck Damn yourself. It. He also complains. About six months maternity well, leave. But he says it in this way, though. He's going off on his whole, I don't get six, six days. I don't get to leave at two to go coach Little League. I don't get six months maternity leave. Because you are you don't <laughs> have a... about maternity leave? <laughs> Imagine being mad about maternity yes! leave. <laughs> How more clearly the villain of a movie <laughs> are you in any other movie 
except the ones that we watch. <laughs> and, and you know what rich men get when they're pregnant? Literally anything they want. <laughs> That's how that would work. Pretty sure. <laughs> And he says, he finishes this monologue, right? This oh, big God. stirring speech about how terrible it is. He goes, there's a big difference between the people who sign the check on the front and those who sign it on the back. And I, I've heard mm-hmm. that phrase before, but never in defense of the person who signs the check on the well, front. Right! <laughs> like, yeah, no, the, 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 the conclusion of that is not dot, 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 the people on the front are better, but that's the message well, he's well, trying to send. <laughs> work harder the people yes. on the front like genuinely work harder <laughs> and don't get the benefits the people on the back do which by the way is never true no! ever in the history of all time ever no one who signs the check on the front has had it worse than the people who sign the check on the back i mean look i i've been in like management positions those you work a lot but there's the you, everyone else works harder if you're doing your job like yeah fuck you it was amazing to me that they actually managed to fit this line in without themselves saying oh he's the bad guy I just <laughs> figured that out. He just, Jesus. He just starts reading the white man's burden to them. I'm like, hey, <laughs> we're white. What do you do? Nonetheless, <laughs> taking it up. So, so the accountant and the union rep leave without ma- dunking him in a toilet face first. So I guess they're the heroes of this film. And then we get, he's going into the bank, but the mayor has to stop to threaten to stab him in the eyes if he doesn't hold the Christmas pageant again. He says, says, hey, I heard you left town. How was the fishing? And he's covered in bruises. Yes. And I want him to be like, yeah, man, I got the shit kicked out of me by a fish. <laughs> Union fish. <laughs> Fucking weird. Yeah. So and the mayor explains to him that like he has no choice but to either sell the business or do the Christmas pageant because those are somehow related. We haven't exactly figured out how, but you get it. I just have to point out in the background of this scene, it's just a tiny moment. But if you watch these along with us, when the mayor drives away, if you look, someone has put a neon light up closed forever sign in the window of one of the businesses. And I feel like a neon closed forever (laughs) sign is just impractical. (laughs) Seems like a bad idea for me. Why would you even make those? (laughs) So he goes to the bank uh, looking for a loan here. He he apparently needs a $300,000 loan to keep the factory running. But you know those banks. They're so unfair to rich people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's basically, they're in this scene. The banker guy is like, look, man, after the bailout and sort of pauses because he can't say, it's been easier than ever for factory owners to get money. And it's like what, he just, he knows that the people watching this movie or that they aim this movie at think bailout bad. So they're just like, you know, the bailout, the thing that was amazing for us, yeah, so. literally prevented us from any consequences from our actions. That's made it a lot harder to be a bank. It sure has. To be fair, this particular bank doesn't look great. There's a Commodore 64 on this guy's desk. I'm pretty sure. Like maybe get a new bank. If you walk in and like, you ask for a loan, he takes out an abacus and a notebook. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, we kind of need our $300,000 okay. to upgrade. This somewhere else. I love Carla. I don't appreciate your. <laughs> I just really wanted the banker to give him the exact same speech from the last scene about who signs the front and the back of the check. <laughs> like, Sorry, man. Like, some people are good and some people are shitty. Obviously, you're, you're asking me for money, so I'm better than you by your own your, admission. Get your shadow off me and leave my bank. <laughs> and I love, too, that they have this moment like where he's like, Bill, I got you this job. I was in your wedding. And he's like, so that means I should loan you a quarter of a million dollars. Do you really think that? He's like, No, I don't think that. So, yeah, yeah. no. So he leaves. <laughs> and now, OK, so we cut to him at home that night. He's watching the weather on TV. And the weatherman basically says, boy, if you're a single mom in an unheated apartment with a kid, you are going to freeze to death. Sure are today. <laughs> yep. Jesus. So so he goes to the poor people warehouse, which apparently there is. He brings them some blankets. Two. He brings two, two blankets. Because deep down, 
He's a bare fucking minimum kind of guy, I guess. But meanwhile, the fucking kid has a fucking blanket fort yes! with like 900 blankets. Yes! <laughs> taking up 50% of this, what apparently is not their apartment. It's like 100 people's well, this boarding is, house, whatever. Yeah, now we're in a warehouse or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the commune where Heath and I are going to live when we find that poly relationship <laughs> in Seattle. That's where even, me and Heath are going to have blanket Now, forts. is it just me? We're going to live with our barista. Or was maybe, was maybe a good idea to maybe have more than one bed here in this room? <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Yeah, seems like They it. had plenty of pallets to build the beds. <laughs> exactly. Which is what they make beds out of. And if they of. took away that goddamn tent, they'd have plenty of blankets for them, too. Um, so yeah, so, it, so the, the mom is there and she's, of course, remember she had the poverty cough. He says, you need to see a doctor. And I'm like, boy, should that line be uttered more often in this movie? And, and she's like worse now. So she's on like a sick altar, just surrounded by <laughs> other homeless people, like pacing the room, being like cold and poor. I'm poor and cold. <laughs> cold and poor and hungry and smudged. So now we cut to Matthew. He's gone to an upscale real retail outlet for millionaires. Um, that would be Walmart. Walmart. I love Walmart. And he's there to get blankets because, you know, he only brought the two. Uh, also, girlfriend character or platonic girlfriend character Nancy Doctor uh, shows up at this point. And, and the, the mom doesn't want the doctor's help <laughs> until he's like, no, 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 it's free. She's like, no, I'm so fine, good. really. <laughs> and, and the kid's like, it's free. And then she checks with the guy mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, no, 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 no it's free. <laughs> and we all just had a moment in our notes where I was like, imagine how badly that moment from this movie translates to a country where they take care of Yeah, themselves. right. Like, yeah. imagine a part of a movie where someone's driving on a road and they like stop and the character gets out and they're like, uh-uh, I don't, I don't think so. It's like, no, 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 this is a free road. You sure? Yeah, no, no, free road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> country where you don't have to do a karate block on a doctor. I'm not insured. No, no, don't me. <laughs> oh, it's free? It's true. Okay, it's free. Also, by the way, the doctors, if they just show up at your bedside, they can't just charge you, right? You have to go to them before you owe them money. That's, that's, those are the rules. But it's too cold here. So he says, hey, could we just take all these poor people and stick them in my factory? And she's like, that's a great idea. That's the one with all the machines and dangerous shit, right? He's like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, but it's got heat. Yeah, only a real scroogey asshole would not want you to keep all these poor, untrained people whose mental and physical states we know nothing about <laughs> out of an automotive part factory. <laughs> so, yeah, so he adopts all the poor people and they make him their king, I guess, or whatever. Um, also, th th that foreign guy from the restaurant will show up here with some food for him. This will be the only other time we ever see that character. <laughs> And he shows up with like one small pot of soup or chili for like 50 people. Like yeah. It's enough for like me for lunch. <laughs> right. And there's like a, sh a homeless shelter now. Which the doctor is eating some yes. of, which is very weird. She's having some chili. She's like, I thought this was just for everyone. It's like, yeah, yeah you know, you can afford food. Maybe don't help yourself to this particular <laughs> One of the seven pints this guy brought for the 50 yeah, people. Exactly. You done with that? Hey, can I have one of them beans? Um. Yeah, and of course and she went first. Nobody else has food yet. Yeah, she's right. Like, I go first. <laughs> she's already eating soup, and she. So she comes up to the to uh, Matthew, and she's like, they have this very uncomfortable conversation where she's like, "Well, you know, these poor people are just going to want you to give them more stuff now. You know how the poor are. Yeah, you know, if you give a mouse a cookie." He will eventually consume that cookie. But if you enslave a mouse, he'll be happy forever. The rest of this movie will be literal slavery. Matt leaves. He comes back with bootstraps to hand out. Yeah, later, right. So gonna... <laughs> right. All right, everybody. Check it out. Brought some leather straps. <laughs> this doesn't work out. Uh, the... Borrow money from Mitt Romney's parents. Yeah, know. no, exactly. That just should work. That should work fine. Yeah, no, people dying of the cold in Earth's wealthiest nation are so greedy. Um, that's the message of this particular scene. 
Because because let's be very, very clear. She's like, yeah, they'll just be hungry again tomorrow. And he's like, well, what about the next day? Still hungry. And the next? Still hungry. And the next? Yeah, always <laughs> hungry. They'll just continually be hungry. <laughs> well, at any point, if they're not hungry, will they find food? No, 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 no. no. They'll just always <laughs> be still and hungry. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And again, this this movie's message is not, gee, there should be some kind of government program that gives them stamps they can exchange for food or something. <laughs> this movie's apparently it's 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 messages this is all because of all them damn regulations and unions well if they're willing to be scabs maybe well yeah we'll we get there not well, pay no, them they're if they're willing to be slaves yes let's be very clear the solution <laughs> that we're going to come up with over the next two scenes is literal slavery yeah <laughs> is indentured well, right right yeah exactly yeah, not quite here. slavery because you can't sell them but yeah it's that's that's the distinguishing factor how, right how much is it different than slavery they're housing them in a <laughs> big house and then housing them they got a big house he it makes advances on the young one so, well who, like she's like he likes her the best and he's like ah, how about you and me and she's like oh okay not really yeah, we'll get we'll get to all of those yeah so at this point he's like he wakes up the next morning or actually he's been up all night good personing i guess or whatever um but uh, you know he's trying to figure out now what the hell he's gonna do with all the uh poor people and <laughs> just real quick the background shot here is the best. Everyone's just passing around random factory stuff for no reason. They're talking in the foreground and then people are just like, here is a widget. Oh, I'll take it back from you now. What the fuck? Just why do they need to be doing anything? Well, why did this scene need to happen? Right? Because in the last scene, he and the woman were talking about what he was going to do with the poor people. In this scene, he and the woman are talking about what he's going to do with the poor people. We don't need two separate scenes so that we know that night came and day followed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, CJ, by the way, shows up at this point. And he's like, why aren't there any employees working all of this equipment and making you money, sir? <laughs> um, and CJ, by the way, is very it's... upset about organized labor. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, oh, man, I just wish there was some kind of system where we could all, I don't know, share crops. <laughs> like, like, if, <laughs> like you own the crops, but we grow them and tend them. And just, I was trying to figure out some kind of system. How many acres I you got? How many I... mules you got? Maybe we can figure some. I don't know. I just wish I could sleep where I work. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be great. Um, and apparently, by the way, mom is all fixed now. She wakes up the next morning. She's gotten warm sleep so her coughs are way less realistic now she will never be sick again we will never revisit that um so matthew shows up and he's like with no explanation at all he's like hey i have some things i want to do i would uh, can i borrow your kid and she's like i'm poor you can fuck him for 50 bucks an hour just ask eli 50 i yeah, wish right. so <laughs> patreon.com slash <laughs> we need your help i'm a man of expensive tastes <laughs> so uh so Matthew's out with CJ doing something or something. And and CJ's as confused about the Nancy and him relationship as we are. So CJ's <laughs> like, so is she your girlfriend? Because who the love interest is in this movie is very confusing <laughs> and badly written. And he's like, we've been friends. And he's like, do you fuck that's her? The that's you what fuck you her? obviously know what I'm asking. <laughs> Come on, man. You fuck, so she's free. I can go. <laughs> she's saying I can go for it. So, and also, there's a very weird moment where the kid's like, you know, I just want you to know I don't steal stuff even though I'm black. I just wanted to point that out so that because some of the people watching have not realized that yet, that feel that I need to explain I'm not a thief because I'm a black actor. He goes, my mom says police will put you in jail if you steal. And I'm like, you're black, dude. If you make it to jail, you're luckier than most. <laughs> 11 years old. That's prime shooting you to death age right there. Well, because it's the they now need to shift her path to make sense with this movie. So the transition is I wouldn't steal. Mom worked for someone who stealed. He was a counter. Yeah, I'm a 13 year old child who's never heard the word account. <laughs> Do you mean accountant? Yeah, a counter. Say the word after me. Accountant. <laughs> Cowman. Cowman. 
Crapman. Yeah, yeah, no. Just out of the <laughs> blue with no prop, uh, prompting whatsoever. He goes, by the way, my mom was an accountant just in case yours is evil and conspiring against you and you need someone to look over your books. That might come in handy. Um, and then they, he realizes that they're going to Peyton Park. He gets all excited because that's where they have the Christmas pageant every year. So he wants to jump up and dance on stage. I guarantee you the stage directions just said kid dances blackly. And indeed he does. He just does a little dance. <laughs> He's pretty good. A little dance. He's a pretty dance. good dancer. Got to give it to him. Yeah, better dancer than a singer. Yeah. And, and what happens here is, I don't know if, if everybody knew this, watching an adorable black kid dance makes you a better person. Well, right. It, yeah. That's, that's what happens here. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's actually a good I'm message a in person. this movie. That, 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 that is how it works. <laughs> that's the best message in this movie. I can definitely tell you that. <laughs> What about watching a single mother dance? How about how good a <laughs> Depends on how much you tip. Um, and of course, the kid's going like, boy, I sure can't wait for those tryouts. And then the camera ominously pans down to his tryouts canceled sign in the back of his truck or whatever. That's and just good mise-en-scene right there. Isn't That's it? That's good stuff. Isn't it? That's what you, it happens when your writer and your director is never written and directed before and is actually a cinematographer. So, uh, yeah, so so Matthew just can't seem to cancel the pageant. And as bad as the movie's been up till now, it is about to get so goddamn much worse in the next scene. So before we force Heath's Robin Hood idolizing self to relive this next sequence, we're going to pause for a quick break. First, let me give Act 3 the hard sell, though. Will the town pull together in time to save the Christmas pageant? How are those the stakes in a movie that opened on this guy almost getting beaten to death? Why don't these poor people just sell off a little stock? Find out the answer to these questions and more when we return for the absurdly distant conclusion of Believe. Mr. Enright? Ah, oh, fuck. Where am I? You're What's safe, Mr. Enright. Okay. My son found you and I've been taking care of you. Hey, do you like bikes? I can go vroom, vroom! Um, yeah. Okay, um, can, can you call me an ambulance? I'm in need of medical attention and it's it's the year 2017 definitely need you to well, don't worry Bob's a doctor oh okay I mean that's that's very kind but uh I should still well, just, well should I was maybe... I was I was almost a nurse you, <laughs> not a doctor I'm sorry you were almost a nurse what yeah in, in that I worked for an accountant right so not a medical professional no maybe so just... then I'm gonna punch the moon and fuck myself a full tank of gas mm-hmm Mm -hmm. So, uh, about that ambulance? Isn't he precious? I I would like to go to the hospital. Rest I want to be now. very clear. You need some... Later, rest. Mom's going to make waffles and pancake sauce! Do you mean syrup? Is that pancake, pancake sauce! sauce? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our anti-hero, he was trying to figure out a way to break it to CJ that the pageant wasn't going to happen this year. But before he can find the words, they get back to the factory where all the bad people are waiting for him. And these heartless bastards won't let him run a homeless shelter in an automobile parts factory. I, and they try to make this the bad guy thing. He's like, well, how can there be laws against helping the poor? He's like, no, you're housing them in unsafe conditions with no, there's not even a refrigerator in here. Dude, you know, come on. And then he's like, oh, because you're evil and your regulations make everyone unhappy. You have a child <laughs> sleeping on a drill press. Yeah. <laughs> it's turned off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yeah. So he, he's, he's being told by the mayor, a police officer, angry, aggressive baseball dad, and his accountant, who is apparently with the bad guys for some reason. <laughs> Why? What is he doing? I don't know. I want know. him to be like, all right, man, you're on. Oh, sorry, sorry. And he just I walks over to his side with a grenade. <laughs> okay, cool. This is like sorry. if Tony showed up just every time I got a parking ticket, the cop knocks on my window, Tony knocks on the other side. T Tony, I don't understand. Why are you <laughs> here? Man? I, don't, I don't really know. This seems like this would be an end of the year thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah they tell me better run off them poor people or they're gonna toss him in jail and they in the worst writing ever he's like i mean look you either kick these poor people up or you hire all of them <laughs> oh well, god yes i'm sorry that seems like a, a weird thing to say wouldn't that require a tremendous amount of paperwork and screening? 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just saying you can't have them here. Or fire them. But if, however, they were hired to work, yeah. You, you would be able to string 53 minutes of plot out of this at that point. But I, I don't know why I said plot. That's why I just do. like you, if this was, a, I don't know. Yeah, no, because if it was a movie, it would be awfully generous to call this a plot. Yeah. So, yeah, so now he stands up to give everybody the kicking out the poor people speech, to which, of course, the poor people say, but please, wealthy industrialist, you're our only hope. The government won't help us. <laughs> and he's like, well, the law says not, no doing this for poor or, or I have to go to jail tomorrow. That's the law. Shouldn't he just go to jail, though? You would and think. Let them be, like if that was actually <laughs> right. possibly the law, it's clearly not. If that's how it worked, go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> But then, yeah. until it's not cold anymore, I don't know. The lone child, the voice of innocence, says, But mister, if we work, can we stay? <laughs> what if we all became scabs? And at this point, like the heroic music swells in the background. <laughs> I wanted to watch Heath's face watch this moment in the movie more than anything in the world. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the big hero oh moment gosh. that they have is like we would all work for far lower wages than those union folks were working for. We'll work for food and shelter, apparently. Uh, yeah, apparently, because <laughs> he now hires all the people. He doesn't do any paperwork, doesn't make sure, doesn't check their social security, doesn't get fucking uh, 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 background checks on any of them uh, next to kin on nothing. Um, it's like, well, yeah, now you work here, which means apparently that it's now legal for you to sleep in a so operating with... factory. I just <laughs> Noah wakes up, comes down. I'm sleeping in the sound studio. I don't know. <laughs> some movie. Technically, I work here. So uh, I pooped in the corner. This particular room doesn't have a bathroom. That would be way more reasonable than what's yes, happening no, in this movie. Yeah, exactly, because the studio's in a home. And also, through, the, through this whole scene, like, he's taking him around, showing him all the different stations and everything, and who's going to train him and everything. And the whole time, like, CJ keeps popping out, just, ha like, playing silly games on the dangerous equipment. <laughs> it's like the factory's producing adorable black kids somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but he keeps... Him. He keeps doing something more dangerous. Like he's like, and this is a drill press. And CJ's like, what if I put my hands underneath it? And it's like, oh, CJ. Yeah, oh. right, right. And the next scene, he's like strung by his hands and like swinging across the ceiling on a zip line through the hole he just put in with the and drill like, press. Welding yeah. fight. Yay, <laughs> welding fight. So fun. <laughs> I'm a child says. in a factory. So, st like, cut cut the next day, Lucy and Ethel are eating lug nuts off a conveyor belt. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's too many. It's a factory, though. There's, like, serious, huge machinery. I yeah. just wanted, like, a pan shot the next day of everyone missing arms and legs and, like, <laughs> Lucy and Ethel missing teeth. And, yeah. That I wanted a huge accident, like, a 30 seconds into this montage. Some guy's just like, oh, God, my hand. Fuck. Fuck. This is why we have unions. I don't even know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how good would it be if the poor people got unionized and went on strike again? <laughs> Shut them down a second time. God Join damn it. But instead of that, we're now going to cut to the bar where the evil union rep and the evil accountant are publicly conspiring. <laughs> he's just out in the middle of this bar going like, you think uh, you think he's going to figure out I cooked them books? Yep. Yeah. I buy and drugs. Act three, I'm guessing. <laughs> I buy drugs with more subtlety than these two characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I know your guy, and he always wants to pop out of a fucking trash can as you cross him in the fucking subway station or something. But yeah, <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> I love it so much. All right, you walk west. Trick. I'll be walking east. You, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, you wear a white carnation. You know me, dude. You know what I look like. I've anyway. given okay, well, him an empty handshake every time I've seen him for the last six years. <laughs> every time he goes in for the money handshake, I never do it. I always just go, here's your drug money. And he looks at me all frightened. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> white privilege. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's like, come on, man, I'm, not I'm not white. I'm not white. I'm not white. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. You ever signed the front of a check before? <laughs> I'm not giving you shit. <laughs> 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. So um so the union rep really wants to get his people back to work that bastard. Um and the uh, the accountant is sure he's set things up so that Matthew has no choice but to sell. Okay, well, say what you will about these evil scheming people. The chairs are up and they ordered food at this bar. Fucking oh, yeah. leave. Are you Fuck kidding me? You. These people want to cash out and go <laughs> drink somewhere else. God fucking damn it, people. Just lesson for everybody. If the chairs are up, time to leave. Don't even go in. Find a different place. Yeah. Go to a diner that's open 24 right. hours. You don't want them to jizz in your food any more than they want to jizz in your food. Sometimes we want to jizz in your food, but that's not the point. <laughs> we also want to go drink somewhere else I like more. to take While the we're chairs jizzing down. Enough. So that it's like I'm opening it up. Like I'll take down all the chairs. <laughs> I'll go to a table. Like if they have a table for me, I'll go to one where the chairs are already up and I'll take them all down. And By I'll the way, you there. think Eli's kidding about this. He so is not kidding. When we were in England, he did exactly that. We go to this fucking restaurant and either they've got one whole section set down and Eli's just walking in there going, this looks nice. And, and I just like, yeah, his food. I just right in his food. I guess we could probably like take those chairs down and clean this. Oh, good. Oh, good. Excellent. I was hoping you'd say that. 10%, no matter what. 10%. No <laughs> Although I will question. say in England, they get really excited about that because they don't generally do the tipping thing. Yeah, and they give great service. It's a fucking awesome system. Yeah, have. right? It's almost like our tipping system is goddamn bullshit. Anyway, so now it's time. I was being sarcastic. They have a terrible service, but there are problems with the tipping systems <laughs> also. A non-tipping basis. Separately. Separately. Yeah, yeah. And now it's time for CJ to sing to us because... Child singing is the least pleasant thing that there is. Jesus. And he, to, for clarity, like there's background music that's supposed to make it better. But in the world of this movie, he just sings hallelujah 8,000 times in a row. Like yep. a goddamn cell phone ring. <laughs> I wanted some guy to like take off a welding mask and be like, seriously, sing a fucking song. <laughs> at least put the yaw at the end of it, motherfucker. Um, so yeah, now all the bums sing together and um, just that's the whole scene there apparently. Meanwhile, Sharon is going over the books. That's the, the black kid's mom, by the way. She got a name late in this movie as well. Sharon is going over the books just in case, you know, somebody's cheating yeah. him out of money. And, and Matt walks in and he's like, wow, you look nice now that the... the Rich white lady I know gave you some clothes. Cool. <laughs> you look good without those fingerless gloves. And by the way, the, she is so visibly uncomfortable by him crossing that I am now your employee line. Yeah, that that is such a weird, like, I don't think the point of this scene is like him making romantic advances makes her uncomfortable. I think just the actress couldn't be in the same room as this man without getting super duper nauseous. But might be. It very much comes across as like, hey, come on, we're a family here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It really comes along uh, across as like, oh, this job is great. I sure would hate for you to lose this job. So it, it, we get more things really do happen for a reason. Wisdom. God, Jesus, I hate this so fucking much. Um, I, I, like at this point in my notes, I wrote, OK, I'm on board for stopping at 100 uh, episodes now, Eli. Um <laughs> So now he goes back to the city council meeting to give them like the update uh, about the pageant he's not having. This is a second meeting about him deciding legally to not do a pageant. He doesn't feel like it. Up, up. Doesn't. And he's like, not sure why I'm at a defense table at this not trial. But, uh, it's still no or whatever the fuck I said last week. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Black Warren, the, uh, the angry baseball dad, who is the villain yeah. of the movie, just lies our main character never corrects him he goes you know what else has happened since our last meeting you started running a bed and breakfast out of your factory and everyone in the room is like how the fuck would that even work <laughs> rabble, rabble, rabble. <laughs> what, what is this guy's job this the baseball is he like the town's benny jesuit like, what's he do <laughs> he's so fucking weird he's bad cop He's yeah. okay. <laughs> and, well, and he's like, well, actually, my factory is working 100% now again because I hired scabs. If you quit that union, I'll also hire you, <laughs> said the good guy <laughs> in this movie. Right. To which all of the people are like, oh, I would love that. Yeah. Oh, that yes. seems so much fun. <laughs> and the union rep stands up at this point and at least reminds us that like hiring scabs to undercut the labor strike 
is not like a good guy thing. To which Matthew's just like, how dare you call them names? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this movie's answer is, ooh, language. Yeah, language. scabs is their word. <laughs> About the destruction of the labor balance. <laughs> no need for that. Why not just call them better workers? <laughs> <laughs> indentured something. I feel like indentured something would work. Indentured share su- slaves. <laughs> they're, they remind me of the Slavs. There was this period of history <laughs> where, they, where the Slavs were working for free on these medieval farms and they loved it. They fucking loved it. Um, not exactly how that word came about, but it's close. It's great for the economy. <laughs> Military industrial complex Noah doesn't was going great. In the Armenian genocide. That's what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thinks it that was is all so made up. unrelated to this point. But yes, I don't. Um, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, and of course he goes to leave the city council meeting because apparently he realized suddenly that this is not a court order <laughs> trial and proceeding. He have to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I love as he's walking out of here. After just, you know, yelling that he is no longer a union factory by fiat or whatever, the angry baseball dad is yelling after him like, what about the fucking Christmas pageant? That's what really matters. Somehow that's still what this movie's about. It is. It is. It yes. Really, really is. So now the bad guys go to meet at that bar again. This time it's crowded and they're still loudly conspiring against Peyton. <laughs> And so they they say they need the deed to the factory by Monday. Now, why why is there a deadline? Yeah, How it like is Cinderella involved now? <laughs> and just, what the fuck's happening? Why does any of this matter? What the timeline fuck? wise? So yeah, so he goes into his indentured servant factory where apparently the doctor is still there. When does this woman do doctor stuff? She's <laughs> right. a doctor. What the fuck? Like I just wanted to cut over the ERs, a big pile of dead people. Like oh man, she's just oh, she's hanging out. Nancy. <laughs> weeks now <laughs> in a factory i don't know so now he has to tell her the backstory about his his grandfather's bootstraps <laughs> yeah, she goes this is the fucking best she goes well wait did you inherit a bunch of money in this factory from your grandfather to which he responds let me tell you a story about a farmer and his sons <laughs> <laughs> what the, the f- answer is yes if anyone ever doesn't say no that means yes <laughs> Yeah, right. Did you inherit a bunch of money? You know, that reminds me, me of a riddle. I once heard. <laughs> it's like when you ask somebody how old they are and they ask you to guess, right? Yeah. You, oh, you're over 30. Well, I know that much at least. <laughs> um, yeah. So and uh, what he's trying to explain here in some kind of convoluted, maybe it made sense in the writer's mind thing is that the fact that the pageant exists is his actual inheritance. Is, is that it? What? I, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense, so it can't be it. But that's what he says. I still don't know what they think that means. I don't that, he, So he owns a pageant. They keep asking him to say it, it's it, me. But it's a free pageant. It costs money. He's he. They had an account, but all the, yeah. the account ran out of. I don't. Who the this fuck movie's knows? poorly written. It needs oh. a fire. Let's put a Jesus. fire in the movie. Should yeah, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so as he's walking away from that bizarre and stupid scene, the accountant guy comes up and he tells him, hey, you know, they put a lien on your property and by Monday they're going to foreclose on it. It's like, really, can they do the the two-day foreclosure there? I don't feel like they can. And surprise, surprise, we learn now after the accountant leaves that that accountant is the crooked accountant that Sharon used to work for. She says, she says, he had me do some things I didn't think were right. And everyone in the scene is like, oh, yeah. And she's like, stealing. I meant stealing. And they're like, oh, "Oh, fucking boring. Jack off to that. (laughs) So, yeah. So also this is where they learn. He learns that they lost the Chevy contract, which makes sense since he's just grossly violated union regulations. Right. Chevy would definitely cancel any orders they had with this factory that just hired a bunch of scabs to take over from their striking union workers, wouldn't they? Yeah, but... Kind of feel like he, they would. But he's going to go to Chevy and uh, do like a Tommy boy for him. He's like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's going to bring CJ to to meet with like Bob Chevrolet and dance for him and be like, <laughs> all right, you got to buy the part. Yeah, exactly. Well, it works Are so well. Are you building and, a uh, 12-year-old child? Are you machining the parts for my cars? I am. For Chevrolet? Am. All right. So, all right, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. It worked out so well in... Uh, 
there will be blood. So um, you got to have a kid with it. <laughs> makes sense. Um, so, yeah, so if they're driving down and, and see, they stop at a gas station, right, to get some drinks on the way. And CJ goes in and here's some people in the gas station talking about the fact that Matthew canceled the Christmas pageant. God, and it could not be words written. Just like, and oh, you yeah. know what else? He canceled the Christmas pageant. And I heard he lied about it to that boy, CJ, <laughs> that one whose hopes were so up about playing Gabriel. Mm hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> there he is right there. That's the person we are talking about. Right. <laughs> bye. <Bye-bye>. Bye. <laughs> So, so CJ goes back out and now he's, he's like, he's all kind of pissy and everything. And he doesn't want to talk to Matthew. <laughs> and Matthew's just like, huh, Siege? CJ, CJ, don't do this. You want some skates? Huh? You like skates? Music? What do black kids like? You black, like black kids like hockey skates? Country music? What do you like? <laughs> you want me to lay a beat down? You can do a rap about your feelings? <laughs> My name is CJ and I'm here to say all right, CJ, meet me halfway here. <laughs> so CJ lays it on him that now he knows that the Christmas pageant has been canceled and he didn't tell him. And this is such a bizarre exchange when you inescapably realize that you have a 35 year old man yelling at an 11 year old kid about how his life is falling apart. <laughs> I mean, they have a couple's fight. <laughs> he won't let him call him CJ. He's like, don't yeah. call me CJ. You're not my friend. And I wrote in my notes, don't do this, CJ. Don't lash out. Not in front of <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And during this couple's fight they have, by the way, CJ says to the grown man that he loves him. I wanted them to start making out hard. I was I wrote down like what kind of fucking movie is this? How is this on Netflix? But yeah, no, apparently it's platonic, like all his relationships. Um Thank you, Clarence. I care about spending time with you too. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. So, okay, and this is also where he learns that um, he can save the Chevy contract. Like, he he left and came back because they wouldn't meet with him or whatever. But he came back, and, and now they give him a note saying, oh, you can save the Chevy contract. You just have to go to this bar at 11 p.m. and, you know, come unarmed and all alone. He's like, oh, that makes perfect sense. That's how working with Chevrolet works. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, we'll place the order there. Do you take... Doubloons, <laughs> <laughs> like the Pennsylvania DMV, all of a sudden. So that night, Doctor Lady and 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 Sharon are massively failing the Bechdel test together. <laughs> I mean, if you mm. count Jesus as a man, like no sentence that they say passes the Bechdel test here. So oh, anyway, it's so good because she go CJ's mom is like so. What's with you and Matt? And she's like, oh, we're like brother and sister. He sure does like you. To which she replies, yeah, Clarence likes him a lot. No. Yeah. Okay, start, <laughs> let, let's both start naming the people we're fucking. You go first. You go first. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the love triangle they're going for here is CJ and the mom and Matthew instead of Ooh. Nancy. I don't, that makes more sense, I actually. I am into it. <laughs> and now it's time to talk about the value of faith for a really long time. Uh, real quick, can we talk about Dr. Lady's dead tooth first? <laughs> Did not notice that until now. Can't believe I didn't. She has a dead tooth. It's just like tooth, 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 milk dud, tooth, tooth. <laughs> it's rough. So, yeah, so, you know, she goes on and on about how Matthew's given everyone hope. And now we cut to Sharon later singing to herself on a couch with her eyes closed like you do when the evil accountant shows up to burn all the evidence of his evil paper working. Okay. Th again, this is, this is foiled by QuickBooks and like cloud backup. There's no, there's no plot. Burn that's what factory. Oh, is, should you back up things that are important on the cloud? Should you? No. Should you? Is that important? No. Anna? No. Anna, is that something you should do? <laughs> Don't just keep it all on one hard drive? <laughs> Huh? One droppable, easily droppable. Did you edit this out? Um, I need this. 
So, yeah, so he starts setting stuff on fire. And, of course, he's the guy that Sharon used to work for. He's like, oh, Sharon, I should have known you were here. You'll find all my skullduggery, so let me set it on fire. And she's like, not if I murder you with this golf club first. He's, he starts doing, like, a Bond villain speech of, like, here's how I'm going to carry out this plot. But, like, CPA style. So, yeah. so it's like, you never, you never understood the power of the decimal point, did you, Sharon? Did you? Arthur Anderson was right. Enron did deserve that valuation. <laughs> Using mark to market. Well, but the, and that's the thing is that not only are they having him do a CPA version of an evil bad guy monologue, but they don't understand. Like they've never actually figured out how this movie works. So he doesn't have anything to say. So yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's just random accounting words. Twas I that numbered the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to murder you. So they get into a fight. He throws her down the stairs. The trash can that he was setting all these papers on fire in gets knocked over. It's just like two sheets of paper on fire. But which is plenty enough to catch an entire factory on fire within seconds. This, this notebook was made of thermite, apparently. Or like <laughs> fire nine. I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> Office goes up in flames like like a fake airplane hit the side of it. Yeah. <laughs> That the whole Thank place is going to collapse like Tower 7. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you get it. Eli knows. He was so, in on it. Well, <laughs> such a great summer. Oof. So <laughs> Nancy calls Matthew it, it, to tell him that the factory's on fire. Uh, so he like leaves the setup bar to go do something about it. You know, he's going to blow it out, I guess. Um, meanwhile, CJ is out there and, she, and, and they're like, where's your mom, CJ? And he goes, I don't know. So he runs into the flaming building to go find her. And this is where we find the Vultures of Horror fire. It's so good. <laughs> this couldn't... And the actors do a bad job of pretending there's a fire. Mm -hmm. The props are so clearly not on fire. Nope. Honestly, like, just drawing an orange marker on some of these boxes would have been more convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly wouldn't have been less. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and apparently... Okay, so yeah, he runs in and the mom is like, Clarence, is that you? What the fuck is wrong with you, child? This building's on fire. But it, it, as he's like walking through the uh, warehouse looking for her, he finds her Bible. <laughs> Got to save that. Puts it in, inside his shirt. Mm -hmm. I wanted a flame to leap out, but the Bible in his chest pocket blocks it. And you find like a <laughs> bullet flame. He you holds can be it up his face. Famous on YouTube. Yeah. Lights on fire. Yeah, exactly. Gets horribly burned. I don't like Fire kids. goes to jail. Explains that it was part of a YouTube channel. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now, also, by the way, okay, so Matthew gets there. He runs into the flaming building also to save people. Um, and as he does, he has to explain to firefighters how to do their jobs. Yes, he keeps bringing, keeps giving instructions like, come here, come here, I own this factory. And they're like, yeah, man, we're still firemen. This isn't like a factory. You can't learn it in an afternoon. <laughs> here, you give me the oxygen in the hose. I, I got it. <laughs> Also, I guess this is the director thinking he's being clever, this backwards reverse saving CJ sequence. <laughs> but what? it just looks like he's taking CJ off a trolley and putting him back into yes! the fire. No, he's the fires now. <laughs> <laughs> we must sacrifice one. Um, yeah, and he was pretty, pretty pissed about the pageant anyway. Yeah, yeah, who the fuck knows? It's so goddamn weird. I don't know what the hell they were going for. So later, now we're at the hospital waiting for word on CJ. This is a very strange relationship. And as Matthew sits over him, he reads the Bible, bingo. Yeah. Also, they show us on the wall a plaque that says oncology department. So, oh, really? Just don't like, you know, pay attention. <laughs> or did he get fire cancer? I, yeah. Maybe <laughs> next day lung cancer from the smoke. <laughs> didn't didn't the notice worst. that one. That's amazing. And, and he goes to CJ's mom, right? And she's awake and CJ's not. And she asks him, she's like, hey, was anyone else hurt? And he's like, nope, just the people with more than five lines. None of the none of the feature deck trees. Everyone else was. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, did the doctor not? tell you this no only the owner of the building gets to hear about the patients after a fire so I'm, <laughs> apparently I'm asking you well it's so bad because okay because she knows her son was in the fire right because she heard him before she passed out so she says how's my son and he waits two goddamn minutes to answer that question right like he's, <laughs> he's like trying to find the words and she's like oh my god he's dead oh my god and he's like oh no no he's fine i just i just he's fine yeah I was, I was i was trying to think of a way to ask you and ask you out at the same time i don't i don't yeah He's fine, um, and so are you. Dinner? 
<laughs> Boing. There you go. So now we get the scene where he has to go back to the burned up factory and for a very long time pluck things out of the <laughs> ashes so and have flashbacks. Oh, oh man. I wanted him to find like a, a tire iron and just be like, a cross in perfect condition. Checkmate, atheists. <laughs> <laughs> See? This is an evidence orgy. It is literally like the plot in order. He's like, oh, look, my wallet someone stole. And then Clarence's little angel. They, uh, oh, and the lighter the lawyer used to light this on fire. And, uh, you. A signed confession. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, a picture of my future son. Okay, this is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so he goes back and he finds all the evidence because, again, the firefighters, you know, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. He needs to do all that shit because um, he's John Galt, you know. Um, and now he goes back to to CJ, who's still unconscious in the hospital. And he has this very awkward, I love you, too, conversation with the unconscious 11 year old he's not related to. Yeah, weird. And, of course, he says at that, you know, at that point, he's like, what I'm trying to say is. I believe, as in, like, that's the name of the movie, believe. <laughs> I'm tired of these motherfucking snakes on this mother... Oh, sorry, sorry, no, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cops show up to arrest him. Yep, and because literally, they come in and they're like, hey, we need to uh, sort of wrap this whole thing up in one last scene. Uh, did you... <laughs> Do all the crimes, or was it one of us? <laughs> Let's this out. I don't. It's like none of this is how anything works. No, the cops don't like wait to hear mini court cases in the hallway. Like, oh, hold on, hold on, let him finish before we arrest this guy, which is our job. They're doing a little court, th waiting for like a judge to slowly lower down from the ceiling. Well, I, honestly, when the mayor shows up, that's basically what how fucking happens. And though. be it's the jury because they have no idea how fucking stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. But okay, so they're accusing him of insurance fraud. They're like, oh, you increased the fire insurance on your factory by $3 million and now it just burns down. And it's like, that's not how insurance fraud investigations work. You don't just, you just don't arrest the guy because you're like, that was convenient. You don't, <laughs> there's an investigation that goes anyway. But just a cop arresting my dead body on January 17th, 2018. <laughs> just, uh, uh, nice it was try. murder. <laughs> so, so okay, but he, this is the Columbo moment, right? This is where he lays out all the evidence and proves that it was aggressive baseball dad the entire time. But none of the evidence that he offers up means anything until he brings right. out the eyewitness. Yeah, right. Like, right. They, 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 he does the thing with the, like, the Zippo was on the ground. Like, yeah, this is a guy who worked in that fact yeah his Could zippo a, would almost but also like you can't I, like this is such a unique zippo that like it couldn't be someone else's oh did the <laughs> fingerprints survive the fire yeah. also found this piece of flint and like a native american guy just dives out the window <laughs> runs away. and what's so amazing is like one of the pieces of evidence is like uh i believe you have bruises on your arm from when she hit you and she is standing there yeah well and then yeah he, he, he shows the wrong arm first you know Right, like they weren't going to check his other arm. He's like, see, <laughs> yeah. my arm is fine. <laughs> and, and then she arm. shows up and she goes, it was the other arm. And they're like, fuck, he does have two of those, that clever bastard. Man, if she wasn't in this little mini hallway court case, we would have got fucked on that arm thing. <laughs> we would have arrested the wrong guy. I mean, the eyewitness who saw him burning the place down, eh, not so much. But those bruises, those bruises are fucking there. Yeah, um, but also he has the he has the accounting form apparently, and this is where the mayor shows up mid scene mid conversation. The mayor shows up, obviously knowing what everyone has set up to this point, because he's now found the redevelop. In case this wasn't convoluted enough, he's found the redevelopment plans that the aggressive baseball dad had written up for when he buys the factory and gets it sold to the Japanese people, who then apparently take it, shut it down, so that he can then take and redevelop the. God damn it! What's going on? I found a mint metallic green skylark. <laughs> it's not the. Oh, this is a different thing. Different, different movie. And also, so. At the end of uh, this whole, like, you know, he, he lays out all of the crimes that this guy's committed and everything, but he closes on you tried to steal the Christmas pageant, which this is how that plays out, right? He's like, you've committed arson, assault, 
conspiracy to commit assault, grand theft, embezzlement, attempted murder, and you tried to profit off the Christmas pageant. That just doesn't even seem like it bears mention at this point. This was on your windshield. It's two weeks overdue. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So they arrest him. Uh, The cops do, because, you know, the hallway court scene is over, apparently. (laughs) I guess. And then he rushes into CJ's room, and apparently CJ is just fine now. Well, he rushes into CJ's room because CJ's room makes the the person just died noise. Yeah. It makes uh, the, like, ee, but they had actually just disconnected him from his heart monitor. I feel like they need a better system for that. Like, is there a way to (laughs) take off someone's heart monitor without letting everyone in the hallway (laughs) think that person died for a second? Seems like seems like you'd go that way if you could. Nurse yeah. pulls out a cell phone. Sorry, I'm going to change that ringtone. That is, <laughs> that is awkward. For, this keeps happening. Oh, God, I am totally changing my ringtone now. Um, so, yeah, so mom is really happy to see him, tells him never to run into burning factories again. And then, of course, CJ tells mom that he loves her and then also that he loves Mr. Payton. Who, and then Mr. Payton tells him he loves see, him. And then the movie cut them kissing. I yeah, I, <laughs> I must believe the movie cut them kissing. It's a love story. If she's a, if Clarence is played by a young woman, it's a love story, and they make out. Right? I love yeah, you, Mister no, Payton. Yeah, exactly. I love you too, Clarence. So, it's a moment like this. So now it's time to go home. Except he wants to stop at the park just to make sure that the town hasn't put on an impromptu Christmas pageant that Matthew doesn't know about. Because he right. had like a dream of faith or whatever. It's super depressing. In reality, kids with impossible magical dreams end up being horribly disappointed. Yes. It's like a free will stack ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just kill a whale. Yes. <laughs> Let's kill so, a whale in Seattle. <laughs> they have them. They have them. They have extras there. Yeah. Ooh. So CJ... Uh, rushes it. They, they see the pageant, and CJ has to run it because obviously they need, they need a Gabriel now. Damn it, now! So the kid with black lung just runs and leaps onto the stage, right into the bum pageant, and then the whole thing will wrap up with someone we've never met telling us the story of Christmas. Yep, and Jesus and, fucking Christ! And CJ's on a crane as Gabriel. Yeah, with a spare Hollywood quality angel costume he carries around all the time, just in case. <laughs> Jesus. And it snows. The whole movie, by the way, we haven't talked about this because this is a two-hour movie that is like getting your fingernails torn out. But uh, the whole movie, he's been like, you think it's going to snow at the end of the movie? You think it's going <laughs> to snow at the end of the movie? And as he's the angel, it's snow. I wanted the snow to fall in like the perfect shape of the factory. It rebuilds the factory. He's <laughs> like, oh, I believe. It's a Christmas miracle. So I, I feel like at the end of this, as we wrap this all up, I know the moral of this story, but I don't know that I can bring myself to express it out loud. Uh, either of you guys care to, to give it a go? No. <laughs> um, I would not. I would. Uh, and it's something I've expressed <laughs> many times on our show before, uh, which is that the poor are gross. And, <laughs> and if you just buckle down, it's not about bootstrapping. It's about being less gross. Just <laughs> a dollar or five on patreon.com forward slash god awful because I don't I don't want to be like them I, I, I don't that would be so terrible <laughs> yeah that should that that should like really uh, bring you those dollars you can make the difference be flowing in yeah exactly <laughs> don't make Eli shop at Zales it's about being a responsible kid who has good parents you need to <laughs> Pay attention to what who your parents are. Exactly. Choose well. It's your own choice. You shouldn't have chosen to be black. Well, if we learned anything from this movie, it's that the poor people deserve it genre is severely underserved. I uh, feel like we should get involved here. Eli seems basically tailor-made for this. So I'm going to wrap up tonight by asking for your ideas for a good Poverty is Your Own Damn Fault movie about the plight <laughs> of the wealthy. Um, about Enemy of the Estate tax in the estate time. <laughs> nice das bootstrap oh that's Ooh. good uh how about flint the story of an electric company that always delivered <laughs> 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 and 
Well, that's going to do it for our review of Believe. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to make you beg for more buttermilk. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? God Awful Movies Live in Seattle. Hell yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, and we're going to be watching Journey to the Sky. No, let me, let me read you the description <laughs> from IMDb here. Oh, please do. This is a powerful drama of Sadhu Sundar Singh. Missionary to India, being raised a Sikh and miraculously meeting Jesus, then facing death by his own family. This man lived a life that can influence anyone. Oh, so this is like a based on a true story. Of- based on a true story <sighs> of a man who met Jesus and became a Christian and then got killed by his family. Well, that sounds fun. Okay, I have one other question for you. Why do you suddenly sound so different than you have through the rest of the episode? I don't know. I You do the editing. I have no idea what happened. I've I've told you for years now, we got better mics. <laughs> we need better equipment. I got a crow flanger, and you won't let me use it. <laughs> All right. Well, with a new crow flanger to look forward to, and the fact that I'm sure that the rest of the transition back to the pre-recorded stuff is going to be completely flawless we'll bring episode 98 to a merciful close once again a huge thanks to all the patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among their ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash god awful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode you can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on itunes and by sharing the show on our various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scathing atheist the skeptocrat and citation needed available on itunes and wherever else podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Noah Lucian's promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Aggressive baseball dad went on to press his face against the backstop fence and yell, Two strikes! Gotta protect the plate, son! Nancy eventually lost her Christianity and was allowed to fuck women in peace. Eli was never able to get the hip-hop angel song from the end of this movie out of his head. Rock, paper, scissors, black guy, black guy, Arab, Heath. Muslim, Heath, Heath, Muslim. Uh, Heath, Muslim, that's it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. At Metro PCS, we let the numbers do the talking. Four, enjoy a reliable 4G LTE network that's faster than Sprint. Two, get two free smartphones when you switch to Metro PCS. 99, the percentage of people in the U.S. covered by Metro PCS. Get two free Samsung Galaxy J3 Prime smartphones when you switch. Metro PCS, wireless figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network or active on Metro PCS in past 90 days. Coverage claim based on talk text coverage. Speed claim from downloads. See store for details, terms, and conditions. 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 Details, terms, and conditions.